Zesva is quite possibly the best coffee brewer in the world. It's reliable, simple to brew, and most importantly, the result is outstanding cup of coffee every time you brew it. Because it doesn't require the recipe or deep knowledge of coffee. Only two simple rules, which I will share with you in this video. Let's start from basics. What to expect in terms of taste? Thick, concentrated, yet not aggressive, soft and round, with incredible aroma, which no other brewer will give you. The recipe will produce a clean cup. All the particles will sink. It will surely fit any taste preference. The brewer itself is easy to clean and it looks gorgeous. But most importantly, it will brew any coffee, from lightest to dark roast. It will open full potential of coffee, while maintaining all of the tastes you can perceive in other brewers, like chocolate, fruits or berries. All tastes will be clean and crisp, but rounded, close to properly brewed espresso, but much less aggressive especially in terms of acidity. Very easy to drink. Freshness of coffee itself. It doesn't matter that much here. Just be sure it's not over one year old after roasting. And if you've opened a bag of coffee beans, it's better to consume it within one to two weeks. Unlike other brewers, you can brew very fresh coffee here, like a couple of days after roasting. It will be okay. As for the grind size, the smaller, the better but you don't need to adjust it. And if your grinder have no ability to go very fine, you still will get great cup, just not as thick. What's really important is freshness. Grind coffee before you brew it, or you will lose a lot of aroma in around 10 minutes after grinding. Water temperature. You can use cold or heated to 60 degrees C to make process a little bit faster. We will use one to 10 ratio meaning if you use 17 grams of coffee, use 170 grams of water. Because I personally use preheated water, I pour water first. It will heat up the brewer and temperature of the water will drop, so that I don't have agitation on higher temperature. Then I add coffee and mix until clumps are gone. Use wood for this, like chopstick, because copper jasve has thin tin coating inside. We need to be careful with this. As for heat, go almost as low as you can. That way your cup will be clean and balanced, and it's easier to control the taste, which is the next step. Color. Color is the only thing that you control in Jasve. Let's learn how to read taste by color. At first, you will have light foam at the top. It's CO2 mixed with oils. It starts to form at around 70 C. Then bubbles appear. Its coffee itself emerge from the bottom, forming the crust. At this point, water temperature is around 75 C. And then this crust starts to go from light to dark. Our goal here is to brew until crust become like caramel. If it's light, coffee will be sour. If it's too dark, it will be bitter. For each coffee, color on which it's most balanced could be different. But usually caramel color is the way to go. Sometimes your crust will change the color evenly, but mostly it starts to darken on the rim first, while center still maintain light color. If so, pay attention to darkest and brightest colors. If rim is too dark and the center is still bright, better to serve your coffee. It's ready. If the center is too bright and white, wait a little bit more. Usually your coffee will be ready at around 88 degrees Celsius. Brewing time itself can vary from 2 to 7 minutes, depends on size of Jasper. But if you choose to brew on a higher heat, it is possible. Just don't forget that the color of the crust is the key. After serving coffee, wait from 3 to 5 minutes to let coffee particles to fall down. Then make 4 to 5 small sips at a time. Notice the strong aroma and changing of texture. From this moment you can enjoy your coffee as you want. But it's better to try it at room temperature in order to feel all the tastes. Previously I've talked about color of the foam, but now we have additional parameter which will help us to determine when to take coffee from the heat. 
the foam motion. These two parameters, color and motion, allow you to control the result very precisely. First of all, it's critical to decrease the dose of coffee and water that you use. You still need 1 to 10 ratio, but for this 120 ml jazwe, at some point I understood that it's more practical to use 8 grams of coffee instead of 10. That way you have more space for foam to rise and swirl. It's easy to calculate the dose by knowing the name of jazwe. Just use 30% less water of its volume. Previously I've used 100 grams in this 120 ml jazwe, now it's 80. And for 200 ml, I've used 170 grams, now it's 140. Because with 10 grams, you lift it from the stove, weigh it and place again. It simply decreases your control. On the other hand, with smaller dose, you have not only control of the color, but also motion of a foam. You see how foam rubs from sides, and spot in the center disappears. Color becomes even. Let's talk about difference in taste that you achieve by controlling not only color, but motion. Here you see it swirls after wrapping inside. In most cases, you should target full wrap first and take coffee of the heat immediately. Full wrap means that the foam from the sides will cover the central spot, which have different colors, so the color becomes even. When it begins to swirl and raise, it kind of boils. You can see bigger bubbles and it will become bitter quite quickly, so don't wait. See that point disappeared and serve coffee into a cup, at least for anaerobics. With washed coffee you can wait a little bit longer. If you take it too early, like before the wrap, coffee will be acidic and less intense in taste and probably will be thin, so it's not a good cup. So make sure it's, it have full wrap before taking it off. Another motion your foam can experience is cracking of foam in the middle. It depends on heat source and form of jazwe. So it will boil not from the sides, but from the center. And when you see this crack, wait for a few seconds and it's ready to be poured in a cup. Every coffee will behave differently, but mostly it will be great when foam cracked or rubbed. Just pay attention to these color changes and wrapping. And as usual, you can get great coffee and jazwe in my eBay store. We use 1 to 10 ratio for Turkish coffee, which will require 30 to 50 grams for 300 to 500 ml brewer. That's a lot of coffee. And even if you need such amount, it will be painful to grind it, because we need smallest grind size possible for this method of brewing. And you don't have ability to brew lower dose. You have room to play, but not too much. You can't brew 10 grams of coffee in 500 ml jasve. And back to concentration, we need to think about it more like a lunga, which is twice as big as espresso. Will you drink 300 grams of espresso? I wouldn't. So what size to choose? Originally, a Turkish coffee cup is designed to hold around 15 liters, and coffee pot size is usually mentioned as full amount of liquid it could fit. So in 200 ml jazwe you'll be able to brew 17 grams of coffee and 170 grams of water. For one person, I would recommend 120 ml jasper. You will use around 10 grams of coffee here, which isn't hard to grind even on manual coffee grinder. For one to two person, I recommend 200 ml jasper, because if you want bigger cup of coffee, 200 ml it will be plenty, while you still can get two pretty good cups. And you will brew 17 grams of coffee here, which is if you brew them for two persons, is like single espresso, around 8 to 9 grams. If you need to brew coffee for 2 to 4 persons, I will choose 270 ml jazwe. You will probably use here 24 grams of coffee, but most universal size is still 200 ml. Best case scenario is to have a couple of Turkish coffee pots, but I suggest to start from smallest one to get used to it. What to expect from real Turkish coffee? First of all, it's enough to have this tiny cup of coffee. You simply make sips and can drink it within 10 minutes. It's not a spress when you can just drop it. It's a coffee which you can really enjoy for a long time. Every moment, from brewing to smell and aroma, which is the most complex within all the methods.